Welcome back, everyone. With the preseason now being over, and in dreadful fashion, by the way, the Lakers have temporarily finalized their roster. Unfortunately, though, they lost more than they gained throughout training camp, with them once again catching the injury bug to a few of their players. And not only will that affect their rotation, but it might change the way they view their future outlook too, which could very well impact their decision on whether or not they choose to make a trade. We will talk about all of that in today's video, and break down how it could affect their team moving forward. Without further ado though, let's dive right into it, and we'll begin by talking about who they brought in for their final roster spot, which happens to be a familiar face. If you have not yet heard, they signed Matt Ryan to a non-guaranteed contract, and at least for the moment anyways, they have a completely full 15-man roster. Now, they could theoretically waive Matt Ryan whenever they want to and change that, but this is what they will be working with for the time being, and they are hoping for Ryan to help fix their 3-point shooting problem. Matt Ryan is one of only 3 players who shot above 35% for them throughout preseason, with the only other two being Kendrick Nunn and Anthony Davis. Their 3-point shooting problem became an obvious reality, and one that was not hard to see coming either. We've been talking about it here for over the past month, and it did not take an expert to notice their lack of shooting. And although that could improve over time as they build chemistry, they desperately needed a pure 3 point shooter. They were hoping for Cole Swider to fill that role for them, but unfortunately, he was not able to prove capable of doing that. Throughout preseason, Cole Swider shot only 24.3% from 3, and that very likely led to them turning to Matt Ryan. They both attempted the same amount of 3 point shots per game, but Matt Ryan shot significantly better with an average of 37.5% and arguably while taking more difficult shots too. Not only did he fill a catch and shoot role for them, but he filled the role of a true off ball threat. He demanded attention from the defense and made them pay if they left him open. And that is something that no other player proved capable of doing for them. You need an off-ball threat in today's NBA. And right now, Matt Ryan was their only real option. With that being said though, did they sign him to the right kind of contract? With Matt Ryan having under 4 years of NBA experience, he was eligible for a two-way contract. And there are those like myself who believe he should have been signed to one. I mean, don't get me wrong here, I like Scottie Pippen Jr but they have absolutely no need for another point guard. It would have been tough to let him go and then see a different team sign him afterwards, but I believe that would have been the best move for them, as that would have allowed them to sign another player with Matt Ryan. Maybe that player could have been Mo Harkless, or potentially a different recently way player like PJ Dozier or Josh Jackson, but regardless, I think they missed an opportunity here. And who knows, they might have even been considering that prior to Shooter and Westbrook getting hurt, but I think we can all agree that they have too many small guards. Even with Shooter and Westbrook being out, they are not really hurting at point guard. They still have LeBron, Patrick Beverly, and Kendrick Nunn, all of which can handle point guard duties. And that to me is telling of their overabundance of point guard depth, which although can be a good problem to have at times, it can also become a bad one. And that could very well lead to them thinking about trading Westbrook again if they have not already. That is what Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting, and it appears that the trade rumors are far from being over. Now, I don't believe they're doing anything with that yet, but they are clearly weighing every available option, as they finally explored the idea of bringing Russ off the bench. They unfortunately did not get a good feel for that with him getting hurt, but it did show their willingness to make him uncomfortable, and do things that they are not willing to do last season. Although, he did appear willing to at least try it, Darvin Ham called him quote unquote, receptive to the idea of coming off the bench. And it will be very interesting to see how they approach trying that when the games actually count. It's one thing to experiment during preseason, but it's another thing entirely to do it during the regular season. And I imagine they want to try every remaining option they have before trading him, as they absolutely do not want to trade away their remaining draft picks if they don't need to. Now, they are definitely willing to do that according to Rob Palenka, but it's become obvious that's their absolute final option, which I do agree with given the current trade market. The final options they have left are with Indiana, San Antonio, and maybe Utah, 
but with them only appearing to be interested in what Indiana has to offer between the three, I doubt they'll be pulling the plug anytime soon. We all know how difficult the Pacers have been to negotiate with, and they do not appear to be lowering their asking price either. They want not one, but two unprotected first round draft picks. And with that in mind, the Lakers will continue to play the waiting game. Their number one goal is to make things work with Westbrook, and then their backup plan is hoping that more trade options become available in the future. Finally though, we need to address the injuries that they are dealing with. And like I referred to before, two of those involved Dennis Schroeder and Russell Westbrook, with Schroeder dealing with an ominous finger injury, and then with Westbrook having tweaked a hamstring, and thankfully for him, it does appear to be only a tweak. According to Darvin Ham, Westbrook told him that he thought he would be quote unquote, okay, and although that is not a professional medical opinion by any means, it is a good sign nonetheless. I unfortunately cannot say the same for Shooter though. The Lakers are reportedly worried that it might be a long term issue, and that he could potentially miss some time. They don't know anything for sure quite yet, but it does not sound very good at the moment, and with Troy Brown Jr. likely to miss some time as well, that is two rotation players that they're down already. Not only that though, but two very important rotation players too. Troy Brown is one of the few options they have at small forward, and we've already seen their lack of wing depth be exposed. And then for Shooter, he may very well have been the starting point guard they had in mind. Beverly got the role for their final preseason game, but I'd be willing to bet that they had Shooter penciled in at one point or another. He is a much more natural point guard option compared to Pat Bev, and one who already knows how to play with LeBron and Anthony Davis too. I'm only speculating here, but it would appear to make sense, and now with them potentially being without him for a while, that could lead to them turning back to Westbrook. To wrap everything up here though, Matt Ryan became their final signing, the Westbrook trade rumors are far from being over, and the Lakers are dealing with a few bad luck injuries. And in my opinion anyways, they could have gone about signing Matt Ryan in a more efficient way, and one that could have allowed them to temporarily replace Troy Brown Jr. Now it would have required them to waive Scottie Pippen Jr., but given their overloaded backcourt, he won't be playing for them anytime soon anyways. What do you guys think though? How do you feel about the addition of Matt Ryan and the way they did it? And then how do you think their injuries will affect their rotation? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.